Welcome to the Tech Meme Ride Home for Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. I'm Brian McCullough. Today, Spotify officially buys The Ringer. We have the official Disney Plus subscriber numbers. Jeff Wiener is officially stepping down as LinkedIn CEO. A Rockstar Games co-founder is apparently leaving that company. And what languages do most developers say they want to learn next? Here's what you missed today in the world of tech. Well, I guess I know now why there hasn't been a Rewatchables podcast in a while. Spotify is officially buying The Ringer, the podcast-centric media company run by Bill Simmons. Simmons is staying on board, and all of the 90 Ringer employees will be hired by Spotify. And it seems like Spotify will continue to keep The Ringer website running, even though clearly they're in this for the podcast. Quote, The companies didn't disclose a sale price, The deal is supposed to close in the first quarter of 2020. With The Ringer, we're basically getting the new ESPN, Spotify CEO Daniel Ek told Recode in an interview after the deal was announced. What Simmons has accomplished in just a few short years, it's nothing short of extraordinary. It's not just his own podcast, but his whole network that he's doing really well. He's a talent magnet, end quote. Aside from the continuation of the website, What everybody is asking is, does this mean the podcasts will eventually go behind a paywall? Well, here's what Peter Kafka tweeted this morning, quote, It would be very surprising if Spotify moved popular podcasts it bought away from Apple, etc. Would make them much less valuable. Also, that's not what they have done with other podcast companies they bought. Could Ringer do new Spotify-exclusive podcasts? Sure. Some marketing benefit for Spotify there, but they also benefit from owning popular things you can hear anywhere. They can't do that with music, practically. They can with podcasts, end quote. Yeah, we always thought that the long-term play for Spotify was to own the music artists by essentially eventually becoming their own record label. But seemingly, it's easier to own the best podcast artists, as the folks at The Ringer definitely are. P.S. Spotify also reported their earnings. Quoting TechCrunch, Spotify reported its Q4 results today, which noted that the company now has 271 million subscribers, up 31% on a year ago, with paying users up 29% to 125 million. Overall revenues for the quarter came in at $2 billion, up 24% on a year ago, with a gross margin of 25.6%. The company continues to post big operating losses, however, This quarter was $85 million, with its loss per share now at $1.26 per share. Podcasts made an especially good showing, growing about 200% over last year, the company said, with more than 16% of its monthly active users now listening to its podcast content, end quote. On the earnings call, Spotify also intimated that the retention rate it sees for podcast listeners is several hundred basis points higher than non-podcast listeners. So at the end of the day, I guess it's just about the fact that Spotify realized podcast listeners are their best customers. Disney also reported earnings last night. First time ever I'm reporting Disney earnings on this show, but that's the world we're in at the moment. I'll actually skip the actual financials because the numbers we really care about are the ones relevant to the streaming wars, right? And those are thus. 26.5 million subscribers for Disney Plus and 30.4 million subscribers for Hulu, the latter of which is up 33% year over year. ESPN Plus subscribers more than quadrupled to 6.6 million during the quarter, up from 1.4 million a year ago. So impressive numbers. From a standing start, Disney Plus is basically as big as Hulu was about a year ago, and it took Hulu more than 10 years to get that big. And if you'll remember, back in June, when Disney kicked off this whole thing, they were hoping to reach 30 million subscribers for Disney Plus by 2024. Some other Disney details. The company says Disney Plus will roll out to Western Europe in March and to India, specifically on March 29th, via a partnership with Hotstar. Disney also plans to launch Hulu internationally as soon as 2021. Today in coronavirus news, ZTE has canceled its Mobile World Congress 2020 press conference. LG Electronics says it is withdrawing from exhibiting and participating in the expo entirely. Quoting The Verge, 
Mobile World Congress, a smartphone-centric conference, is held annually every February in Barcelona, and it's a primary destination for Asian consumer electronics manufacturers to showcase new phones and other tech on a world stage. The conference's organizers, trade group GSMA, said the 2020 show will proceed as planned and said just earlier this morning that there has been, quote, minimal impact on the event thus far due to the coronavirus outbreak. Yet GSMA has also issued a number of measures to try to mitigate risk, including a no-handshake policy at the show and more aggressive hygiene measures around speaker microphones and demo booths, end quote. Mobile World Congress, by the way, the sort of CES just for mobile gadgetry, is slated to begin February 24. Sources are claiming that the owner of the New York Stock Exchange company known as Intercontinental Exchange, also known as ICE, has made a takeover offer for eBay that would value eBay at more than $30 billion, quoting the Wall Street Journal. ICE issued a statement late Tuesday confirming its interest in a deal after the Wall Street Journal reported on it earlier in the day and the company's shares sank. ICE is primarily interested in owning eBay's core marketplace business, the people said, and not its classified unit, which eBay has been considering selling. The classified unit could fetch about $10 billion in a sale, people familiar with the matter have said. ICE may see an opening to apply its technology expertise, connecting buyers and sellers to eBay's core e-commerce site, covering everything from electronics to collectibles, end quote. And sources are saying that Instagram ended up generating around $20 billion in advertising revenue in 2019, a figure which, if true, would represent more than a quarter of Facebook's overall revenue. Quoting Bloomberg, Instagram has become increasingly central to Facebook's future with users and advertisers flocking to the app, even as sales growth slows at the main social network. Still, Facebook doesn't disclose revenue for Instagram separately in earnings reports, instead preferring to highlight the integration of its properties, branding them as a family of apps. The team in charge of direct messaging on Instagram, for example, now reports to the Facebook Messenger team, and the company is changing Instagram's branding to Instagram from Facebook. Instagram has more than 1 billion users, a figure Facebook hasn't updated since 2018, end quote. Reminder that Facebook purchased Instagram for $1 billion. $1 billion. Hard not to mint that officially as the greatest acquisition of all time. Certainly the greatest in the internet era. LinkedIn says Chief Executive Officer Jeff Weiner is stepping down in June after 11 years in the role of CEO. Weiner oversaw not only LinkedIn's IPO, but also its blockbuster sale to Microsoft during that period. Weiner will become executive chairman of LinkedIn and will be replaced by senior vice president of product Ryan Roslansky. Quoting Wired, It's all very ordered. Asked how he planned to alter Weiner's vision of the company, Roslansky said that actually he was fully on board with Weiner's vision. Quote, I didn't take this role to change the company. I took it because I couldn't believe more in what we're doing, Roslansky told Wired. Wiener, for his part, somehow explained his departure as the result of too much love for his current job. Quote, it just felt like the right time. I had always thought to myself that I'd be in the role for as long as I was happy. And then I realized I love this place so much and our sense of purpose, our vision has become so inextricably linked with my own sense of purpose, he said, end quote. So, Let me try this dad joke on for you. I guess I can think of two people that need to update their LinkedIn profiles. It's a day of executive departures, apparently. Huge news in the gaming world. Rockstar Games says co-founder Dan Hauser is leaving the company in March. He had been taking a bit of a sabbatical over the last year, but this is huge news because Hauser had a hand 
in almost every one of Rockstar's biggest games, quoting TechCrunch. Rockstar Games was founded in 1998, and Dan Hauser contributed prominently to the company's successful franchises, including Grand Theft Auto, Max Payne, Red Dead Redemption, and more. Take-Two Interactive is the holding company for Rockstar Games, and it hasn't officially announced the departure yet, end quote. Yeah, the news actually came out in an SEC document, which is a little odd. I'm waiting to see more reporting on that. Hearing some things. If I were running a gaming ride home, this would have been the lead story of the day, hands down. Gaming ride home. Watch this space, because... We're going to have some news for you on that front later this month. Knowing how many of you out there are developers, I like to try to gather stories like these when I see them so that you all can keep abreast of the latest trends. Hacker Rank surveyed more than 116,000 developers across 162 countries and found that Go and Python are the top programming languages that developers are planning on learning next, quoting ZDNet. Google created Go isn't in the top 10 list of the most widely known programming languages, but it does come top for languages that developers are keen to learn. Some 36% are eyeing Go as their next language, followed by 28% who nominate Python as the next target. Other languages high on the learning priority list include Kotlin, which is popular among Android app developers, the Microsoft-created JavaScript superset language TypeScript, and R, a popular language among data scientists. The remaining top 10 desired languages are Scala, Swift, Rust, Ruby, and JavaScript, end quote. Some local news here. The New York Police Department is replacing officers' handwritten patrol memo books, which officers have been carrying around on their beats since the 1800s. The memo books are being replaced with an iPhone app beginning February 17th, quoting the New York Times. The department is retiring handwritten memo books by February 17th in a transition to a digital version, an app on officers' department-issued iPhones. Instead of making entries by hand, whether with flowery script from an ink-dipped pen in Victorian-era New York or ballpoints today, officers will type in their notes, which the app will send to a department database. The transition represents a major shift in the way the department regards this daily record-keeping by more than 30,000 of its uniformed members— and it will vastly revamp how the department can access memo book information. In addition to the book's historical importance, entries can become important legal documents. Department officials say the transition will help eliminate possible abuses, such as faking entries and having to sort through indecipherable handwriting. After arrests, officers have long turned over relevant entries on crime scenes and on statements made by suspects or witnesses, for example, to prosecutors and were expected to bring their books to court if they were called to testify. The memo books largely stayed with the officers who were required to safeguard them even after retirement since the books could be subpoenaed as evidence in future criminal, civil, and departmental trials. It's basically our Bible said Officer Ramsey's Cruz, who joined a platoon of officers writing down patrol assignments in oversized black leather binders at a recent afternoon roll call at the 90th Precinct Station in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, end quote. Finally today, Guy Kawasaki has a new podcast out called Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People. Worth checking out, I think. On today's episode, Guy had Steve Wozniak on. And among all the stories about working with Steve Jobs back in the day, today I learned that Woz still draws a Apple salary. Did you all know that? Was that widely known? I just missed it. Pretty fun fact, right? Quoting CNET. Woz said he's still an Apple employee and is the only person who's received a paycheck from the company each week since its start. Still, After money is taken out for savings, he says he gets no more than around $50 a week in his bank account after taxes. It's small, but it's out of loyalty, because what could I do that's more important in my life, he said. Nobody's going to fire me, and I really do have strong feelings always for Apple, end quote. Man, 10 segments today. I don't know what's been going on lately. The average, I think, is usually between five and seven segments, but every time I looked up today, there was just something else that I either had to or really wanted to talk about. So here we are. 
By the way, I should probably explain the show's title today. Last night, someone tweeted at me asking me, quote, Can you record one episode of the Tech Meme Ride Home without saying, It turns out, please? Which, okay, do I say that all the time? I mean, I might. I'm not aware of it. And I do know that, you know, some people find my voice annoying, or my speaking cadence annoying, and I myself am annoyed by my inability to pronounce names consistently. But do I really say that overly much? I mean, that seems to me like a phrase that would come up often, but also quite organically. Then it, I looked up the Twitter account that contacted me about this and saw it had zero followers and only two lifetime tweets. The other tweet was to Blizzard, asking why it's necessary to restart a game client every time you make a friend request. And the other was to me, telling me that I say it turns out a lot. So I don't know, I was feeling a little cheeky this afternoon, and there, that's the name. Who only uses Twitter twice, and one of those times is to complain to a podcaster about a phrase. Whoever tweeted that, I've got nothing but love for you, because you're a listener, and congratulations! You've got your wish, because now every time I find myself about to say that, you can imagine that alarm bells will be going off in my head. Talk to you tomorrow.